Hi there, I'm Stefan from Bancanto. Welcome to the track by track of our new album, our seventh album, Trust in Rust. Welcome to our show. We're gonna rock you singing. Oh, for Cause our drum is killing. We're sending out for me. Yeah, we start the album with the opener back in the lead and back in the lead is some kind of reset button for the band uh, when we decided to continue the band and record a new album uh, with a lineup change um, we had some ideas on how to continue and we definitely did not want to um, repeat ourselves and just record the last album again so to say so back in the lead is a com some kind of an unusual song but it tells exactly that story it tells who we are so there's no secret meaning behind the text. It's just like, this is Vancato. They are singing metal a cappella. They've been doing so for 10 years and now they do a new album. Um, and the song itself is also quite unusual for us, uh, telling the song structure, the harmonies, and also the melody. It's a little bit different, but it's, uh, it's some kind of reset button to get this seventh album started. Javelin, uh, we get more back into that classical Van Canto stuff, uh, telling from the composition and the harmonies and also the lyrics, which are very positive and as always having the, uh, this basic message like believe in yourself and do what you believe in and do it right and do it so uh, it feels right for you. And that's also what uh, Javelin is about. It's a very positive song with lots of speed and uh, a uh, great breakdown in the middle and basically covering up all trademarks that uh, Van Canto stands for. So here we are, we want for all, we roll for one and now you see us coming, time has come to testify. We are dynamite tonight, we were not near for stainless steel, for party now we lost, trust in Ross. Yeah, Trust in Rust, the title song of the album. Um, we've been asked why we uh, called this album Trust in Rust, uh, as many people see Rust as something uh, negative uh, concerning finding some rusty uh, places at your car, for example. Uh, but for us, uh, Rust is also something that's um, applied on metal and tells that it's not like a high polished uh, thing that you just uh, got out of a shop, but it tells a history. and. Uh, with the seventh album, of course, we have lots of stories to tell and the idea behind Trust in Rust is that it's a good thing that you have uh, made experiences and that you have stories to tell and that we trust in uh, what we do and uh, therefore the title Trust in Rust was just perfect and also it's a nice rhyme, I guess. Yeah, Right the Sky is the first cover song uh, on the album, featuring Kai Hansen himself, uh, which makes us very proud, of course, and um, it's, it's also a good, uh, a good sign and, and a good example for that um, with Van Canto we are able to cover different songs or even, even able to write different songs because the sound itself, this, this Raka Taka thing, somehow always brings it back to the, uh, to the Van Canto sound. And the same happened with uh, Ride the Sky and having Kai singing with it, it makes us totally proud and 
I think personally, I think it's a great thing if you if you um, are in the business for that long time and you still find an approach on how to sing your very own song uh, over and over again and even find a new way of singing uh, it. As we um, had Inga doing the lead voice and then Kai, which uh, who does a very high voice in the original, uh, greatly fits in with a lower voice as well, like in the pre-chorus. So, long story short, you can't ruin a great song, even one country. was our first video to be released with the new album. Again, it's something that covers up the trademarks of uh, Mancanto quite well, having uh, riffs in the beginning, having fast um, verses, a melodic chorus, having a, like a ballad breakdown in the middle and also some raka taka guitar duel in the middle. And yeah, the lyrics are basically just about what the title says, about melody and we thought of melody as uh, something that somebody invented to finally make it possible to write songs and to create music. And when you think of it, uh, how great it is that just putting some notes in a row and having a melody and there you have a new song. Yeah, what a great thing that is. And um, yeah, melody is just dedicated to, to that great invention. Neverland is um, some kind of a, it sounds a little bit dark from the mood, but it's also a very positive song. It's, um, I think it's on the same same level, the ly lyrics are on the same level as um, Javelin and also Trust in Rust. So it's somehow um, dealing with the past and knowing what you've done, but still having that positive approach towards uh, what the future might bring. And um, uh, Neverland wraps this up in a quite dreamy manner. It's a little bit unclear if this song is written by uh, or sung by somebody who's awake or who's asleep or who, who doesn't know if he's dreaming or not. And I think uh, Inga catched this, this mood very well and it's, it's one of my personal favorites on, on the album. Yeah, Desert Snake is something that's completely different for Marcanto and I think this is a song that really shows uh, all the, the, the options that we now have with, with Hagen as a lead singer, adding these growls to it and also these screams but still having the very melodic part, uh, especially in the chorus, which is very important for, for Marcanto. And also the composition adds some, some really new uh, features to Marcanto, so to say. It's very riff oriented and even the drums have some, some kind of a melodic part in, in, the, in the song. So this was real fun and for a, for a, um, for a songwriter um, and, and for a band performing a composition, this was a real fresh and new feeling to Van Canto, uh, adding a completely new sound to an album. And I think Desert Snake uh, does it very good.
very dark song, but um, it's it's all it's also showing that lyric wise. Uh, our positive approach can have different different views, so to say. So it's easy to write a positive song by just telling, yeah, we are all happy, let's go for it. Uh, but dark, the Darkest Days is more of the approach that you can also have a very, very hard time, but still uh, manage to, to survive. Now, that's why this survive, survive, survive parts are uh, um, coming over and over again in the song and um, still moving uh, towards something positive. That's very important. Uh, for Van Canto and um, that's why I think this, this song makes a perfect match on the record because it's another perspective on this positive thing. And um, from, from, from the music standpoint, uh, it's some kind of a, like a hard rock ballad I would call it, uh, with some progressive touch to it and I really love the, the mood of this song as well. is a very fast song, it's, a, it's a, a real power melodic metal song at its best, so to say. Um, it's very riff oriented as well and we have um, this, this duels between the uh, lead vocals all the time, male and female vocals, um, singing different parts of the verses and the chorus and exchanging their, their, their voices. Um, and we also played a lot with the lyrics uh, within the song, so Infinity we added some, some choirs that do some kind of endless loops there and repeat in each other. And um, I think this is a song that, that really makes fun uh, when listening to it very loud because of this fast and powerful approach. And uh, yeah, another one of my, of my favorites of that album. I won't take no prisoners, won't spare no lives. Nobody's burning up and fights. This is the second cover version on the on Trust and Rust. And uh, I think when, when it comes to covering ACDC, uh, we are very happy that we're finally able to do it. Because I think uh, there are uh, some bands or, and some songs around that you can easily cover by telling from the, from the composition. You still can add another voice feeling, so to say. We did so with, with Fear of the Dark, which was uh, sung by Inga, uh, instead of a male singer in the original. But when it comes to ACDC or perhaps also something like Motorhead would be another example, I think you have to, to fit the, the original voice quite, quite well to really get the mood of the song. It doesn't make uh, much sense to have Hell's Bells like a, like a piano ballad sung by a soul singer, in my opinion. So finally, with Hagen, we are able to do it and I think he did a fabulous job on that. Uh, literally, I couldn't, couldn't believe the first uh, takes that I, that I heard from it. Uh, because he, he uh, gets that sweet ACDC spot very well and I think this will also be a life killer uh, being able to perform some ACDC stuff. Great. Now a last farewell Ending stories we must tell As per providence we roam We are heading back home I awaken yesterday Tomorrow it moved light years away and the pain Yeah, heading home is the ballad and it's also a perfect uh, end of the album um, it's, it's about coming home, so to say a returning from a, from a travel you had or from a journey you did doesn't matter what what you understand by by journey. Might be a very uh, personal thing how to see it. 
um, for us it was basically like reducing what we're doing to uh, singing together. So in the career of Encanto, this is just the second song of seven albums um, that's pure a cappella uh, and adding also some a cappella percussive stuff. And I think this is the song where we are most happy about that we now have a seven, uh, seven band member lineup because we were able to add all these different um, different voices and different arrangement parts without uh, overdubbing but just having seven singers singing together and yeah basically that's what what an a cappella band is about but um, I think you can tell from the fact that it's the only song on the album without drums that we still love the loud part of Van Canto and uh, doing metal a cappella um, but as a sum up of the album we really like uh, this ballad style and we hope you like it too. Yeah, some words on the, on the bonus tracks. We did some orchestral versions from songs from the first five Bancanto albums. Uh, just orchestra, uh, Inga et Hag. Uh, and this was real fun. And we think that Armin, um, who did the uh, orchestral arrangements, did a fabulous job. And it's also uh, something that feels really great for the original composer that uh, the songs we, we once thought of are even uh, doable in an orchestral style. So, of course, now we, we all feel like very big composers. And uh, yeah, we, we also try to, to get some new approach to, to the, the emotions that are transported by the lead vocals. So I really like it a lot and um, yeah, I hope you like it too. And again, just think of it just like another, another sound and another dimension that is open. Um, we did not re-record the songs to replace the old recordings. They're still there and we're happy that they are. But this is just a new way of listening to Van Canto, having an orchestra and two lead singers. We love it. <laughs>